Hi everybody, how are you doing? It's me, Camila Rose, and I'm back for our Tarot Tuesday for the first week in February. Can you believe it? We made it through January. We're officially into 2021, and now it's time to see what's going to happen in February, the month of love. It's Aquarius season. Look at this hair. What is this hair doing? It's the month of love. It's Aquarius season. It is just a time of coming together. It is black with my hair. Black History Month. So let us celebrate all of the black individuals, groups, communities, people who have done such amazing things in our world, who have contributed to the forward progression of our society, who have lived, survived, thrived, and who are still making it today. Let us honor those who have passed, both those who are in our families, those who have been friends of ours, those who have made major contributions to our lives, and those who were unfortunately unwillingly killed in the past of any time throughout creation. So it is a time for us to give great honor and to give great energy to all of those people and to care for ourselves and to continue forth to build a great new world where our little ones with our legacies will be able to grow up in a different society and a different situation and to hopefully have all new things to work on and to focus on and to live a life full of love without the fears and the issues that have been prevalent for so long. So that is my wish and my intention for this month, forever, my life work, <laughs> and maybe do the work to make it happen. So let's get started. It's going to be February the 1st through the 7th. And let's see what the cards have to say. That Aquarius energy is going to be active. We are completely and totally shifted. We are finally, I believe the only planet that will still be in Capricorn will be Pluto. Pluto's a slow mover. And I don't even know if Pluto's technically not a planet anymore, but I'm not trying to piss off the god of the underworld. So, you know, you take it how you will. Ooh, Nine of Swords. Well, what a card to start off with. Overthinking. Overwhelmed mental masturbation. All in our heads. All in our heads. This is an interesting card though to get with it being. I'm gonna take this one. Ooh. Ooh. Not in February. Justice card. First card out the gate. Come on, Libras. Come on, air energy. That's exactly what I was talking about. Well, I'm going to start talking about before this card came out was that a Nine of Swords is an interesting card to get during Aquarius season because it's kind of suggesting that we're sitting here ruminating and thinking about how to change things, how to change the situation, how to switch up the energy, and it feels really big and it feels really overwhelming. But when you are changing a society, that's a big deal. That is something that will go on forever. It will have long-term implications and long-term outcomes so may we be grounded in justice in fairness in the energy of libra and in the energy of truth and in the energy of equity so there's some justice coming forth this week balancing out of things it could be good <laughs> Could be good, could help out because if you've been carrying more swords than what you should have with that nine of swords, maybe it's time to share some of those. Ace of swords, whole new energy, 
whole new situation, whole new way of viewing things. New, 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 new everything. That Aquarius energy is coming through strong this first week of February. New way of life, new way of thinking, new way of seeing, new way of everything brought forth by the Justice card. Justice is coming forth. Oh, is it easier to see a little bit? Justice is coming forth and it's really just going to shake things up a bit. We've got that sword in the Justice card and now it's being held up to say, okay, we have seen what was not light as your heart, light as a feather. Um, that's my favorite analogy, Mayat, from the Egypt Egyptian mythology who would it's the scales of justice and you would take your heart and you would weigh your heart on scales and you would weigh your heart against the weight of a feather and if your heart was as light as a feather because you had followed the 42 laws of mayat then you would go on to the you know the good good outcome otherwise i believe that you would have to just continue forth and be reborn and all that fun stuff Six of Pentacles. Work, 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 work. Okay, so Six of Pentacles is a card of giving, of sharing, of generosity, of altruism, but it's also one of maybe needing assistance, needing help. This really, to me, is speaking to, first off, if you are overwhelmed, if you are carrying more swords than what you should be, because other people should be assisting you, you need to let them know and you need to pass on some of the burden. Burden, but, you know, pass on some of the work. You shouldn't be carrying everything on your own. Also, though, if we are going to start something new, if justice has been served and it has led to a new system, a new program, you're going to need help. We can't start all these new things. That's the whole Aquarius thing it's it's Aquarius's whole vibe is assisting others at a large scale capacity it's not necessarily just helping themselves it's helping family helping neighborhood helping city town state country many countries continents multiple continents it's global on a scale it is large scale it is cosmic on a scale it reverberates throughout all of the many systems and all the many groupings of people, of animals, of plants, of energy. It can encompass all of those things. And so you can't do that on your own. It's just, it's just doesn't make sense. It'll leave you in Nine of Swords energy. We don't want to be there. We don't want to stay there. You have to come together. Some people will be doing giving, some people will be doing receiving. Some people will then be able to take what they've received and share that and, and give that. It becomes this cycle, this reciprocity of people just sharing resources, sharing ideas, sharing ways of moving and changing and getting things done. And it's beautiful. It really is when we do it together. And so that is our reading for the first week of February. I think it's going to be good. Oh, I need to get an outcome card. Let's get an outcome card. Outcome card. Let's see what the final card is for this first week in February. I am very excited about this reading. This is some different energy than we've had in a really long time. And I do think it is the shift. Ooh, Ten of Wands. Like I said, you can't do it all on your own. You will feel overwhelmed. You will feel burdened. You will feel like it's too much. It is a long road. It is a lot. The work feels like it is never ending. Whether that is your personal work that you're doing so that you'll be able to feel more comfortable working with others and assisting others or whether that is you and, and just you and your group, you and your community trying to find these long-term solutions. Whichever way it comes out, whichever way it plans out, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. We're trudging up the hill. We're making it there. But the payoff and the outcome will be worth the work. 
So let's do it. Let's work, y'all. Let's get it done. So exciting. Okay, well, that's it for this week, our first week of February. Like I mentioned in my last reading, I will have my 28 Days of Love on the blissinstitute.org. So go check it out. This week, first week, we work on the mental. So it's all about kind of how our mind works. It's all about the psychology of love and how we can change our thoughts and shift the way that we understand loving ourselves and loving each other. So go find your love language. Go find ways to express it. And then next week, we'll get into the heart of things. We get into the emotional side of what's going on with love. So I'll see y'all later. I love you all. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.